Today, I'm going to show you how to add logic statements to your UX prototype. Let's get started. So to start off, I'm opening up a previous project that I have been working on. I already created a video to show you how to get to this point, where I imported a sketch design into Origami and made it interactive. I will link that video and my introductory video into Origami in the description below. In that previous video, I show you how to get to this point, where if the user swipes on a recording item, the delete icon then appears, and when they select that delete icon, the item is removed and all of the other recordings move upward. Because delete is a destructive action, I want to add a modal here so the user has to confirm if they actually want to delete their recording. In order to do this, I'm going to have to add some logic statements to ensure that the interaction design behaves as the user would expect. So I'm going to jump back into Sketch and import my design. So I already have this design and this design already in Origami, but now I've added this delete modal, which now I'm going to want to import. So I have this overlay background layer that I've added. So I'm just going to Command C to copy it, go back into Origami and paste it, and I will label it overlay. And then I'm gonna go back into Sketch Grab that modal as well, Command C to copy it, go back into Origami and paste it by clicking Command V, and I will label this modal. As you can see, the overlay layer is added at full opacity, which is not what we want. We only want it to be a slight overlay, so in the opacity area, I'm going to decrease it to 0.5. I'm also going to improve the alignment of the modal. Right now, it's pinned to the top left area of the screen. I'm going to anchor it into the center of the screen and then move the Y position up a little bit. It's actually gonna move in the negative direction. So my end goal here is to have the user swipe on the recording, tap on the delete button, and then this modal will appear. So initially, I do not want the modal and the overlay to be visible. If I refresh the prototype, it is currently visible on the screen. So for right now, I'm just going to hide these actions by clicking the eye icon. So right now I have, as you swipe on the recording, the delete icon appears and when I tap on it, it removes it. So that tap interaction is occurring right here. I'm going to actually unlink the tap interaction from that switch. So therefore the rest of these interactions will not occur when that button is selected. So if I refresh, swipe and tap, it doesn't do anything at this point, which is what I want to occur. Instead, I'm going to want to reassign that tap of this button to trigger that modal. I have all of these logic statements for how I want the rest of the prototype to behave when it is deleted, but right now I'm just going to move that down. When this button is tapped, I want to trigger the overlay and the modal to appear. So essentially, I want to add a switch patch that turns on the opacity of those layers. So the tap will turn on a transition from zero to one of the opacity of those layers. So I'm going to add an animation. But as we said before, we didn't want the overlay's opacity to be one. So we're going to see a problem when we refresh it. We'll swipe and we tap, and then the opacity becomes one because we set it to one in the transition, which we don't want it to be for the overlay. So there are multiple ways that we can go about doing this. I can add a separate transition patch or I can add a divide patch to divide that value by two. So that way the overlay will not be one, but it will be 0.5. So again, I'll refresh, swipe and tap, and now it's half opacity, which is what we want. Now when this modal appears, it gives the user several options. If the user selects yes, delete, I want the pre-existing interaction to occur where all of the items will move up and recording four will be removed. If the user selects cancel or anywhere else in the overlay, I want the modal to be dismissed and the recording four to not be deleted. So now I'm going to have to add some logic statements to ensure 
that when the user selects cancel or this overlay, the modal disappears and the item is not deleted. So in order to do this, I'm going to have to add some logic statements into this prototype. Because I imported this as one solid piece, Origami views this as one entire layer. So if I turn it on or off, it is one entire layer. So in order to do this, I'm going to have to add a hit area. So I'm going to go to this plus area and add a hit area and place that layer. This is essentially a hotspot that I can move throughout the screen. So if the user taps anywhere in that area, I can control a certain behavior. So I'm going to move its position to be in that cancel area and increase the width of it. And I'm going to call it cancel button. Then I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to move it over for the delete button. So now I'm going to add the tap interactions. So first I'm going to design for the cancel interaction. So with the cancel button selected, I'm going to click touch and then tap. So if the user taps on this cancel, it is triggered. I want the user to be able to tap on this overlay as well. So if the user taps on that overlay, I also want this to be triggered. So if the user taps here or here, I want the modal to dismiss. So I'm going to add an or patch, basically saying if either of these actions take place, the or patch is true. So if either of these are true, I want it to turn off that switch. So if I select it, it's turned off. And these are only appearing because I have them as visible right now, but you can make them invisible. I also want this entire interaction to revert as well. So I'm going to attach that to the off switch. Again, swiping and tapping on this, and then this appears. If I click cancel, it dismisses. Now, what if the person says, yes, delete? I want to have a separate action for this. So I'm going to go to the delete button and click touch and then tap. If someone taps yes, delete, I want the current interaction to occur where if they tap on it, it turns on this interaction of removing that recording and then moving the other recordings upward. I'm also going to want to remove the overlay and the modal. So I'm going to also attach this tap interaction to the turn off switch of that modal. And when I do so, it gives me several options. I'm going to say or. So let's refresh, swipe, tap. If I click delete, it performs the expected behavior. If I click that outside overlay, it performs the expected behavior. Now, if I select anywhere inside of this model, I expect no behavior to occur. But when I tap on it, it dismisses it. Why does that happen? It happens because that overlay layer technically takes up the entire width and height of the whole screen. Therefore, because I didn't designate this to a particular area, it now views that as me tapping the overlay and dismissing it, which is not what I want to occur. I want to tap on the modal and no action to take place because that is not an interactive element. So I'm going to go to the modal and say touch and then tap. I want to say that if the user taps on this modal, I do not want anything to occur. So if I tap here, you can see that that tap is being triggered. So instead of it being when it is tapped, I want an action to occur. I want that no action to occur when it is tapped. So I'm going to add a not patch. So when the tap is triggered, I don't want anything to occur. So I'm going to have to add another statement here. I'm going to add an and state. An and state will return true only if the two individual elements will become true. So if that or state, the cancel or this is true, and I'm not tapping on here, I want the modal to be dismissed. So I'm going to attach the or and the not to the and, and then attach the or to where it was previously. So I'm going to move it here. Let's see what happens now. I swipe and tap and I tap again and no action occurs now. The reason why the modal is not being dismissed now 
is because I am saying that if I tap on this area, tap is true when I click on it. So I want this to not be true when it's tapped. And therefore, if I ever tap on this, the and will have a negative value here, something that's not true. And therefore, this whole statement will not be true. So it will not dismiss the modal and it will not turn off that delete switch. I know this can be a little bit confusing and sometimes it just takes a couple of tries to really get it. But essentially what I'm saying is that I want this modal to be protected and to not trigger the dismiss modal animation or the original delete animation when it is tapped. So now if I click cancel, it dismisses as we would expect. If we select the overlay, it dismisses as we would expect. And if we click yes delete, it behaves as we would expect. So this is how you can add logic statements into your origami prototype. Adding logic statements really brings to life the prototype and makes it feel and behave like an actual application. So just to review what we did, first we added the interaction of the cancel button and the overlay. So if I ever tapped on either of those two areas, the modal would be dismissed and the reverse interaction would occur for this initial interaction of the swipe and the delete button appearing. Then we noticed an issue when the modal appeared and I selected on a non-interactive element, it behaved as though I was selecting on that overlay layer. So instead I had to add a logic statement where I essentially said that if the modal was selected in this area, I do not want that interaction to occur by adding a not statement. Then I connected the or and that not statement together with an and statement. Both of these elements have to be true in order for these interactions to occur. So in order for the dismissal to occur, I have to select this area or this area, but not this area. If I did select that yes delete button, then I want that original interaction to occur where the modal is dismissed and the other recording items move up. So this is how I add logic statements to my interactive prototype. Adding logic statements really does help make your prototype feel like a real app and can definitely help during user testing sessions. Please let me know if you have any questions about the topic and I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks for watching.